Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The word Greenland probably didn't cross the lips of cabinet members at Chequers when they were dreaming up their bespoke Brexit model. But the experience of the world's largest island, an autonomous territory of Denmark, might have lessons for the way the UK precedes even the relationships between Scotland, Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. We sent our reporter James Clayton to learn about Greenland in the early 1980s. Usually the uh, Greenland waters are uh, most serious, uh, usually beside the uh, icebergs because it's easier for them to see the fish swimming around. Lars and Axel are hunting for seal. They represent the country's latest battle with the EU, a journey that started four decades ago. In 1982, fed up of European fishing trawlers, Greenland chose to leave the EU, then the EEC. Just like that, the Union lost almost half its territory. In the subsequent negotiations, Greenlanders agreed to give EU limited fishing quotas in exchange for cash. That deal took three years to complete. Akaluk Linga was part of the negotiating team. Well, it was uh, uh, very uh, difficult to European Union and the Europeans to understand why, why we wanted to get out and uh, why we, we didn't want the money. But the fact is that, that there was no money. There was, no, uh, there was minimal investment in infrastructure, which we needed badly. So uh, uh, that's why uh, we could see that uh, there was no economic uh, reason to stay. The deal has generally been seen as good for Greenlandic fishermen, but not everyone here is so happy. He's by the seal. Uh, we're waiting for the seal in this area. Uh, you can uh, make it tired. Shoot beside it, should it die. Every time it comes up, shoot beside it and it, and it die again. Therefore, it's more, uh, losing air, so you have to breathe in a lot longer time, so you have a good time to shoot at. In 2010, the EU banned the sale of seal products within the Union. There is an Inuit exception to the ban, but it's destroyed the market. We have also some corrate... Uh, Mitty Linge owns a travel shop in Greenland's capital, Nuuk. So when the EU um, banned seal products, yeah. uh, what did it happen to your business? Uh, they had been more slowly uh, to sell them to the other places in Europe. They are afraid for their will countries fixed their, their, their stuff they had uh, buy f uh, from here, from Greenland. Before the EU ban, huh? how many seal skins were you selling? Uh, I think approximately 200,000, uh, 240,000 skins every year. And after that, after EU banned, uh, we're selling approximately 2,000 skins was sold uh, uh, to the Eastern market. This is exactly enough. Yep. It's a big difference between 200,000 and 2,000. And we call it zero market, no market at all. Mikael Rosing is an MP for the Democrats, the minority party in a government coalition. I definitely think it would have been a lot easier to negotiate with hand lot more bargaining power if we were part of the EU. We could kind of go, yeah, you guys want our fish, well, we want to sell seal skins. What are you going to do? That's still the argument we're making, but it's, it's really difficult when you sit on the outside. It would be a lot easier to sit on the inside at the table and say, hey guys, this, this, is, this is the deal. We are part of this too. Fortunately for the marine life, Lars was better at hitting icebergs than seals. The only thing he brought back in his boat was someone else's catch. For other industries, Greenland's exit from the EU has been more positive. Nikolai Nissen has just started exporting beer to the EU. 
He takes advantage of Greenland's curious international status. It's outside the EU, but it falls within the Kingdom of Denmark and is therefore an overseas territory of the EU. There is a VAT in Denmark, uh, like in Germany and so on. So if we were a Danish company in Denmark, we would have to pay 25% on everything we buy for the company. But because we are outside the EU, we have the possibilities of deducting the 20 to 25% when we take it up here. When it comes to exporting, it would be easier for us if we were a member of the EU, of course. It would be easier for all the paperwork and um, handling all the uh, practical matters. Being a part of the kingdom still gives us certain advantages. And it is easier to use Denmark as a stepping stone for us to export, because it's almost as easy to export to Denmark as if we were a part of the EU. And when the goods are in Denmark, they are in the EU. So it's like a stepping stone for us. Greenland needs investment. The runway in the capital Nuuk isn't long enough to land large aircraft, and there are no interconnected roads in Greenland. This is as far as you can get in Nuuk. Some believe that Greenland's sheer size, and perhaps more importantly its potential mineral wealth, means that if Greenland were in the EU, it would be eligible for hefty funding. Well, basically EU is, is, is a place that has a lot of money. They get a lot of money from the from the member states and then they redistribute it. And we basically wanted the ones that would get more money back than we give in. So for us, it should be a no-brainer economically. We should just get in there and get access just to that big pot of money. It would be difficult to say that Greenland has thrived outside the EU. It's heavily subsidised by Denmark, alcoholism here is rife and the country boasts the unenviable claim as the suicide capital of the world. Nicola Sturgeon has recently floated the idea of doing a reverse Greenland, with Scotland staying inside the EU as the rest of Britain exits. Well, I, 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 was, uh, I was surprised uh, uh, by the uh, opposite uh, policies there, because you don't get uh, more independence uh, joining the European Union. But you might get independence from the UK if that is the only case that the Scots have, then it's excellent. But uh, uh, going to European Union is uh, actually uh, giving uh, your uh, political freedom uh, to, to someone in Brussels. That's uh, the issue. When asked, most people here are only vaguely conscious of the EU. But Greenland does offer the UK an imperfect template of how to leave the EU. In many ways it's benefited from leaving, but it's also been left out in the cold when major policy decisions were being made about the future of one of its most important exports. James Clayton. I've been